Hello and welcome to Good House 1968. This is Brother White speaking. What I do is read and interpret from the Tanakh. It's the Hebrew Bible as well as the Quran. Uh, please support the church ministries by shopping at goodhouse1968.space. For all your digital product needs, uh, health, beauty, furniture, whatever you're looking for, you can go there and find. Thousands of products are available. You don't have to leave an email address or you don't have to join a mailing list to browse the website. So feel free. Please support church ministries. Funds go and proceeds go to the purchase of Korans and Bibles for the Bible students, for yourselves if you are a follower or someone who listens on a regular basis. All right, uh, let me open with a word of prayer and then I'll begin the service. Uh, one moment, please. Let me get a little better light. All right, good Jehovah, I petition you. Regardless of whatever name you may be called, that you open the eyes of those who call upon you. Jehovah, Adonai, Allah, God, good, or whatever it may be. Yahweh, God, I pray to you, strengthen the brothers and sisters up. Use your Ruach HaKadosh to empower your way, your word, and your healing power and deliverance and salvation and provide us sustenance through it. Empower it within us. And keep our eyes open on the deceitful ways of Satan, the devil, and his demons, the ghost, and the spirits. Regardless, whoever comes forth to try and turn us to the left or to the right, never let us stray from the narrow road that leads to everlasting life. That centered off road that we should all follow. Let us not be gouged in the side or in our feelings, hurt feelings, to cause us to stray off from things you set us out to do. Inventions, experiments, things, healing things, healing herbs, healing medicine. Let your way prevail and let your way, regardless of whatever time or how long it takes to be done, let it be done. Guide us and direct our footsteps, but yet put it in us to take the first step towards this healing or whatever it is that you want us to do. Put it in us to take the first step towards it. And Get us energized enough to where we can do so. If it's a drug addict or murderer or thief or whatever, I pray that you open our eyes and remove the rafters from our eyes and guide us and direct us. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, or your sire, or Yeshua. Amen, shalom, shalom, amen. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start off with the Quran. And it goes to say, hold on here. One moment, ladies and gentlemen. And he provides for him from sources he never could expect. And if anyone puts his trust in Allah, sufficient is Allah for him. So Allah is sufficient enough for you when you put your trust in him, when you put your faith in him, when you put your belief in him, when you put your heart, your pure heart and your mind, body and spirit to tell the truth, to believe in the truth that he puts here for us. Just like you believe when you plug up, uh, uh, outlet into the wall, or excuse me, when you plug a socket into an outlet, that you're going to hear music or watch television or play your guitar or play your or play your uh, keyboard or your computer. Just as you believe that those appliances work for you when you plug into an outlet or you hit a switch on them, believe in the truth of Allah. These things He puts here for us are God. These things will do as he says. For Allah will surely accomplish his purpose verily. For all things as the law appointed, they do proportion. So God 
What God sets out to do, he does and he accomplishes. Just like a scientist, a lot of scientists set out to do things and they accomplished it. When you put your energy toward and direct your energy, and even in sciences and uh, knowledge and anything, when you direct it on the narrow path, using the scriptures as a guidance, as a force motivating you, then you will accomplish what you set out to do. If you pray, first of all, to God, and it's in accordance with the Bible or the Quran, when it's in accordance with God's word, rules, regulation, it will occur. Those of your wom women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them the prescribed period. If you have any doubt, it's three months. And for those who have no courses, it is the same. For those who are pregnant, their period is until they deliver their burden. And for those who fear Allah, he will make things easy for them. That is the command of Allah, which has, he has sent down to you. And if anyone fears Allah, he will remove his evil deeds from him and will enlarge his reward. So by undoing your evil wickedness, no good and good stiff, you enlarge your heavenly reward. You enlarge earthly or material rewards as well, but that's not guaranteed. It's a heavenly reward that is guaranteed that you enlarge, that you make greater for yourself a chance to receive Everlasting life, because that is a guarantee for the good action ones and the righteous action ones. And it's smoke of pregnancy here. We're getting into fathers taking care of their children, or whether it be your father taking care of your children or your mother taking care of your children. The wages for that, it says, that is the command of Allah, which he has sent down. And if anyone fears Allah, he will. OK, let me go on. Let the women live in the waiting period after the divorce in the same style as ye live. According to your means, annoy them not so as to restrict them. So you don't want to restrict them from your monetary needs because you divorce them if you have children. You want to take care of your seed, your offspring, your children. Because by the powers of God and unconsciously, you will them here. Remember that you will them here unconsciously when you hey i'll take a chance i don't care if she gets pregnant i just want to hit it or have sexual relationships with her and it goes to say uh and if they are pregnant they spend your sustenance on them until they deliver their burden so even if they're pregnant you want to take care of them so that your offspring that lives inside of them is taken care of you don't want to annoy them by saying, man, look, man, we're divorced. You're pregnant. You're on your own. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I don't even know if it's my child. Don't do that. Husbands or divorcees, don't burden or plague your former mate with such actions because those are bad actions. You want to preserve her until you find out if the child is yours. Then you can take a course of whether or not you'll pay for it suckle or for the child's sustenance and needs. It says, give their recompenses and take mutual counsel together. So you guys are to work problems out, those problems out that you're divorced and things like that. According to what is just and reasonable. You want to be reasonable, ladies, when it comes to that. You don't want to say, well, look, man, give me $2,000 a week because you make $20,000 a month. No, cut it short. It ain't going to happen. Okay, correct. A lot of people are like that, but the majority of the people are not. You see so many rich people and their children live in slum houses or in the slums. So wake up. Be within a, a reasonable uh, way of receiving uh, money. To, monies. It says, let the means of, uh, let, let the man of means spend according to his means. So if you only have the slight means, still you ought to provide for that former mate or if she has delivered the child, that child's sustenance. The man who resources are restricted, let him spend according to what Allah has given him. Allah puts no burden on any person beyond what he has given him. After a difficulty, Allah will soon grant relief. 
How many towns that insolent oppose the command of the Lord and his messengers? And, excuse me, did we not then call to account to severe account? And we chastised them with a horrible torment. So the horrible torment for us, brothers and sisters, would be separate from you. We're not going to put our hands on you. No, we're not going to do that. Separate from you, ignore your speeches, uh, your socialization, your uh, uh, funny jokes and things like that. Separate from the wicked door, the evil door, the no good door, and the good stiff door. We don't want no parts. He don't take care of his children. Separate. He's classified in that classification. Then did they ch taste the evil result of their conduct and end of their conduct was perdition. But we, as I said, just away from them. Don't ever put your hands on them. Just stay away from them. We allow them to attend and to, to listen to the services. That's good. Because we want them to, to make a change or conversion from their state of action. Uh, it says, uh, Allah has prepared for them severe torment in the hereafter. Therefore, fear Allah, O ye men of understanding who have believed. For Allah hath indeed sent down to you a reminder. Now, here's the reminder for you brothers and uh, for you brothers out here who are selling uh, illegal narcotics. It was first tasteful in the beginning, and uh, these brothers I'm speaking about who are in uh, gangs and organized crime. It was the taste was first good in the beginning, but it soured up, and if you Wondering what did you do to cause the sorrowing up versus legal, but then if it's a herb We can always say we can question that authority to leave it to God, but Remember God put control here, but then there's a thing about whether or not marijuana should be legalized as well as other forms of drugs Just like it was with alcohol back in the uh uh, the days of the, the, the 20s and the 30s, I think they call it the per, prohibition days, prohibition days. So just then, what would, what, what that I've seen with a lot of gang members, they don't take care of their children. They go out and have all of these children with these women, and yet they do not provide sustenance for their children, neither sustenance for the girl while she is carrying the child. This you will redeem a reward that you will not like. Now, when we say hereafter, God doesn't touch you uh, as far as he is sending you back where you came from. He's not going to torment you in hell. But the hereafter is hereafter here too. So the hereafter is here too. For the living or the mentally dead in a dead state, that dead state of doing bad actions. You will reap what you sow, and God says so. O oh, ye who believe, truly among your wives and your children are some that are enemies to yourselves, so be aware of them. So we have our enemies, but we want to protect our children, and we want to believe, trust, and put your faith in God and truth, put your faith in the truth that he put here and speak the truth that you may empower and build it and build upon it. But if ye forgive and overlook and cover up their faults, verily our lives are forgiving, most merciful. Your riches and your children may be but a trial, whereas our law with him is the highest reward. We're put here for a purpose, but your actions are noticed and watched by the creator. He has his eyes out that he will not tell you. People will say, well, angels, those are, it's just those were classified as messengers in the beginning. Messengers. But remember, all of them come down and took women, God's children or his creation, and he told them not to. So are these trustworthy eyes? Remember, God is not a fool, and God watches them as well as everything he created and made. Just as you as a scientist watch your experiments or your lab projects and things like that, so does God watch us because we are his project or his experiment. And as an experiment, you watch the actions 
to see what they will do. You don't say, okay, I'm going to push you in this situation and see what you do. God does not do that. God watches all actions because all knowledge comes to him from us as well as the knowledge he holds and as well as from his own private sources that we will not know of, especially after tasting or stealing the knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve, or Adam and Eve, call it what you like. Your riches and your children may be but, a excuse me, so fear Allah as much as ye can, listen and obey. It says here, listen. So remember to listen. As you go about through your day-to-day -day basis, you don't understand something, turn around and ask them to repeat it. Listen to what a person has to say and tells you. If you accidentally start to speak while they're still speaking, shut up, listen. Ask them to repeat themselves. If it is a church sermon and the minister's up there after the service and you didn't understand something or hear something, go up there when the service is over and ask him to repeat himself. If you do not understand something on this video or any other video, replay it. Email me for Bible Quran if you need it in order to look up what was being spoken about in the ministries. Now, this what we're in is uh, al Tala or divorce. And we go here. We started off, so I'll give you the uh, book. Is, uh, <sighs> well, if you send for a Quran, ask me for a Quran, the page is 444 al Tala. Talak, but we start at the previous page before then. It says, nor what is hidden and what is open, exalt, exalted in might, full of wisdom. That is our creator, great and glorious God. It says, if ye loan to Allah a beautiful loan, he will double it to your credit and he will grant you forgiveness. For Allah is all thankful, most forbearing and forgiving. God is forgiving. That is it, and merciful. He shows forgiveness and mercy to us. Remember that. So we can always come to him when we have problems, when we're possessed, when we have demons in us lurking in our homes, ghosts, spirits, and things like that. You can always come to God. God will let you know what you have in your home that is, is attracting them. Remember, there's for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. For every attraction, there's an opposite retraction attraction. So if something, if you have a negative vibe here, then you want to get rid of the negative vibe because it will attract. Now, negative attracts positive, but it's not to think positive the way we think. It is something that will be attracted that you may or may not like, may be in total disdain with it. Okay, old prophet, when ye do divorce women, divorce them at a prescribed period, and count their prescribed peers and fear your Lord. Turn them not out of their houses, nor shall they themselves leave, except in the case they are guilty of some open lewdness. Those are the limits set by Allah, and any who transgress them does verily wrong his own soul. That, so we're, we're, we're talking about here, you even, if they don't have a home, it's wintertime, show to them. Now, if it's complete lewdness, they're bringing in their male friends in your home, you're divorced, or you're not going with the girl anymore, then by those means, lewdness prescribed by God, put them out, even though they may be bearing a child. But that is up to you. You don't have to. That's just what God says you're allowed to do. So know that. Thou knowest not if perchance Allah will bring about thereafter some new situation. So God brings about those for those loyal, faithful, trustworthy, devoted, and truthful and believing. 
He brings about different situations for them in the means to comfort them, joy, happiness, and provide sustenance and deliverance and salvation for them. Or it may be the reverse, which we do not see. So this is why we comfort or seek our Lord's comfort. Thus, when they fulfill their term appointed, either take them back on equitable terms. Equitable terms, if they they say, I'll, if not, they say their actions prove they won't do the lewd acts they did uh, to be put out of your home. Didn't say shut off the funds, just said put them out. Uh, it goes to say, uh, equitable terms, take for witness two persons from among you endured with justice and established the evidence for the sake of Allah. Such is the admonition given to him who believes in Allah in the last day. And for those who fear Allah, he ever prepares a way out. So here we have the situation in lewd. If they're still lewd and they refuse to leave, bring in a just, justifiable witness. That justifiable witness is the person who has witnessed these actions, bad actions of theirs. So that they can tell the authorities when you call them to put them out by force. Now, remember, Allah is for for the justice that you brought before Allah by bringing a just witness. Allah will work a situation out for you. Remember that. And it will, what God does, uh, I consider is to our liking. Even though we may have a hard time admitting it, it is to our liking. When you have the peace, when you have peace back among you. All right, it says here, let them arise from among you, a group of people inviting to all that is good, bringing together what is right and forbidding what is wrong. They are the ones who reach ultimate felicity. Do not be like those who divide among themselves and fall to dispute after receiving clear signs. Okay, here yeah, that is uh, start. But uh, remember, when you receive clear signs and you obey, you receive uh, good in return as what you reap, what you sow, and even your heavenly reward. Yes, those who keep their true faith and act right, surely Allah loves those who act righteously. So God loves a righteous person or a person who does good and does righteousness. He will, you may stop and think, well, these situations that occur, a lot of situations occur for us to learn from. God allows us to learn, especially in demonic possession when you say, well, I do all of this and that, but yet I still know I have demons in me and ghosts and things like that. But Allah allows us to go through these things in order for us to learn. Remember that. Even insanity, even prison, even the death of your child or the death of your sustenance, your material, earthly sustenance, like your husband. God allows these things to happen in order for us to learn from and prove ourselves worthy of his mercy and forgiveness. Really, those who sell their faith for a small price. So you start messing with spirit mediums, your coat and things like that. And you just don't want to do good. You want to try and maybe still go to church, but yet on the side, you do witchcraft, black arts, uh, uh, magic practices. So what does it say here? They owe to Allah and their own true word. They shall have no portion in the hereafter or the, <coughs> excuse me, the new kingdom. And Allah will not find it worthy to speak to them nor to look at them on the day of judgment. So it's bad if the creator doesn't speak to you. You got to go to court. It's just judge. Bam. Tell your butt back where you came from. But you guys could speak in a lot of harsher terms as far as the, the uh, results. And Allah will not find it worthy to speak. Okay, it says uh, they shall have a painful penalty. So when they have to carry back the diseases that they caught here, the ailments that they got here, even though their sins was forgiven, they were shown mercy, but yet go back where you came from. I'm not responsible for you anymore because you are a wicked door. And these things, sin is brought about through and sickness. 
So evil, wickedness, no good, and good still. So don't totally accept the sciences, even though they are correct. Bacteria, uh, diseases, things like that spread. They attract. They go in opposite attraction, reaction. So remember, it is due to sin. And surely there is among them a section who change the book with their tongues as they read. So even those, as you go through the different churches, and you see the different ministries on uh, television, they will read what is in the book, but they give a different interpretation and the true meaning. So be alert and aware and uh, get those Bibles and books that he is ministering from, not different ones, but what he is ministering from. Now here I give you the books for free. I send them to you for free. There you may have to purchase a hundred or two or three or four hundred dollar book because those ministers on television are making millions and millions of dollars and they buy millions and millions. Well, they spend a lot of money on their religious materials to continue to draw and entice the audiences with man-made doctrines of their own, which is the interpretation. The man-made doctrine is that interpretation that is swiped from the Bible that they're reading from. They gave their own man-made interpretation or the interpretation of man. Yet the scriptures that they spoke about or bore witness to are the truth. It's just the interpretation is different. So it's like licking the frosting off of a cake, taking the frosting off of a cake. You would think it is a part of the book, but it is not a part of the book. And they say, that is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. It is they who tell a lie against Allah, and they know it well. And they know it in their hearts that God did not give that interpretation. But if you read it for yourself, and you read from the latter to where something you didn't understand, or you have a question about, or what they spoke about, you can understand it. Go back four or five pages, read on up. You can understand it. It is not possible that a man to whom is given the book and wisdom in the position of a prophet can say to people, be you my worshippers rather than Allah's. On the contrary, he would say, be you the worshippers of him who is truly the cherisher of all, for you have been taught the book and you have studied it truthfully. So for a Bible student or someone researching out the Bible as you're supposed to be doing and studying the Bible, you can't put nothing past them because they're going to read it and look it up and study. Nor he would not instruct you to take angels and prophets for lords and patrons. But remember, those angels all came down, took and had sexual relations with the women. Even though some respited their hearts, well, not respited their heart, but changed their hearts and felt bad and wanted forgiveness for what they had done. But yet some still went with Satan. Some still remained in heaven. You don't want to put them there. You may think in your mind, that would be a good president, a good governor, a good mayor, but or even a prophet. He is sent here to deliver the word of God. He doesn't have time to be sitting there trying to count out national debt and things like that, or city debt or uh, statewide debt, or if it's a country, country debt. You don't want to put those type of people in power. They shouldn't even be seeking power. They should be seeking to do more conversions for God, do more of the word of God, to be a messenger for the word of God. Even though it says a lot of people would decline being a uh, uh, president, king, queen, mayor, governor, some some position in authority, because they recognize what they see going on, and they realize there is no change but only in the Lord. If any turn away from after this, they are perverted transgressors. So let's step back here for a moment, and we'll go. Do you believe in Him and render Him help? Allah says, do you agree and take this, my promise, as a binding on you? They say, we agree. He said, then bear witness, and I am with you among the witnesses. So if you bear witness in your actions by doing these things you learn and make it like, just like people go out and bind people and want the binding to stay in witchcraft, Make your God-given binding stay with you in that life instead of a curse from a witch and believing and things like that. Even if they poison you, 
only stay with the binding from the Lord. Stay with the Lord. Because Excuse me, because this is more likely where they got the binding when witchcraft, which Satan parts you from the Lord. Because in order to do a binding, they have to <clears throat> first they got to get your attention. They have to to get your fear. You only fear God. Remember that. You fear anything else, they got you because they can do a lot of things that you may consider impossible or extraordinary, but they can pull those things off. Give them, uh, give them time with you and they, and they can work something over on you. If any turn away from this, they are perverted transgressors from the binding with the Lord. Do they search for a religion other than the religion of Allah? When all creatures in heaven and on earth have willingly and unwillingly surrendered to him and accepted Islam, and to him shall they all be brought back. So that is the resurrection where those creatures will be brought back. So here in the in the in the uh, the Bible it doesn't speak of the angels. I mean the animals. Excuse me, being brought back, but here it does. We don't want to seek any religion because it comforts us like uh, Scientology. I mean, this is using that as an example. So if we feel, well, I like to go, I'm a homosexual. I like to go out and do things homosexuals do. Or I like to go out and have sexual relations with all women that I possibly can. Even though the scriptures, it would be based, you would have sex uh, for if you were planning to get married or on a homosexual basis to cure yourself of it. So if you just want to go out and do things uh, on your own way and you want a religion that will agree with you, and to uplift you to continue doing those actions, whether they be bad acts, whether they be bad actions or good actions, you don't care. You just want some uplift spiritually as well as physically. That is something you do not. <clears throat> that is something that you do not seek. Say we believe in Allah and what has been sent down to us and what was sent down to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac or Isaac, Jacob or Jacob and the tribes and in the books given to Musa or Moses, Issa, Jesus and the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between one and another of them and to Allah do we surrender our will in Islam. If anyone desires a religion other than Islam, submission to Allah, it will never be accepted from. Now, they're not talking about uh, you can't accept Christian. Remember where the Quran came from, a Bible student, Prophet Muhammad, who was uh, uh, learned from other prophets and messengers. So don't say just Allah. That is not meant here. It is meant the way because this way we follow is, a go is good. Or righteous actions, good actions. So that is the religion. None other than that. That's what it's speaking about here. So be understanding of this. It says, if anyone desires religion, okay, uh, he will be he will be with those who have lost all spiritual reward, heavenly rewards, for straying to the left or to the right from the narrow road that leads to everlasting life. How shall Allah guide those who reject faith as they accepted and stood witness that the prophet Muhammad was true and that clear shines had come to them the prophets? But Allah does not guide those unjust people. For such people, the reward is that of them rests the curse of Allah, of his angels and all mankind. So with you for accepting false religions such as uh, witchcraft or Scientology and things like that, uh, well, let me take Scientology. I don't want to speak against them because uh, um, I'm not thoroughly, uh, I've studied some of their literature, but I'm not thoroughly familiar. I'm just speaking about what is against good. Anything against good, that's just common sense. It's, it's bad. You don't want any parts with it. Would you like if you came in your home every day and something was going wrong? No, you don't like bad actions, so don't do bad actions. All right, so 
And he goes to say, this is what Adonai Elohim says. It won't occur, it won't happen for the head of a ram is Damascus. And the head of Damascus is In In 65 years, Ephraim will be broken and will cease to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Sharam, and the head of Sharam is the son of Ramallah. Ramallah. Without firm faith, you will not be firmly established. So what we learn here, without firm faith, if you put your faith in God and keep that faith up, you will be delivered and you will find heavenly bliss or rewards. A way to test faith is to take a piece of aluminum, take a needle, and take a plastic box, a cube, about approximately one centimeter tall in height. And you can get it about one inch cube. And you stick the needle 